So if you've gotten blood work done and your testosterone levels aren't exactly where you want them to be, you want them to be a little bit higher, should you start taking TRT right off the bat? Well, this video is gonna tell you the answer to that as well as some steps you can take before taking TRT because it is a lifelong commitment. So I wouldn't jump straight to TRT if your testosterone levels, levels are at 500 or 400. Let's first go over a few steps to increase your natural endogenous production and to see if you can get away without having to take TRT and inject a needle in yourself for the rest of your life. So a few disclaimers first, um, I'm not a doctor, this is just my opinion. So I'm not telling you to take TRT or to not take it. So first, what would be considered low testosterone? Medically, that would be anywhere under like two, 300 nanograms per deciliter, which I would say is very low for a man. For a male between the ages of 18 and 40, I would say that your testosterone levels should be in the range of 500 to 1200. So if you're at the low end of that or even below 500 nanograms per deciliter, the first thing that I would do is address the actual reason why your testosterone might be lower than where you want it to be. And then fix that reason. That's the first step. So try to figure out, is it your diet? Are you eating a bunch of processed foods, fast foods, shitty foods? Are you under eating? Are you constantly stressed with anxiety? Are you either not exercising at all, or are you over exercising, doing hours of cardio per day, which also goes hand in hand with under eating. If you're malnourished, that's an input for less testosterone production. Is your body fat percentage too low or too high? And it's only gonna be too low if you intentionally got it that low, let's say from doing a natural bodybuilding show, because it is normal to have lower testosterone levels from dieting really hard naturally. And of course, if you're too fat, now you're also gonna have excess estrogen production because testosterone converts or aromatizes into estrogen in your body fat. Now, sleep is also a big one. If you are not sleeping enough, that is going to have a negative effect on your testosterone levels. So if you got four hours of sleep the night before you got your blood test, your levels might not be as low as you think they are. And then lastly, I would look at your actual lifestyle. If you're constantly doing things that give you instantaneous pleasure, smoking weed, watching porn, playing video games, and you notice that it's taking away from your productivity, your motivation. This isn't even the scientific explanation, this is just common sense. If your body isn't having to do stuff, if you're not having to go through adversity, if you're not having to hunt and gather food, if you're not fighting in battles or doing hard things, you don't have a reason to be producing lots of testosterone. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. So if you can figure out why you think your testosterone levels are low, you got a shitty diet, shitty sleep schedule, maybe your circadian rhythm is off, you know, you're going to bed late, waking up late, figure out why your testosterone levels are low and fix that see how you feel after a few months you know six months or so and then you know get your blood tested again now during that process of fixing the things that you're already doing you can also add things into your life to help with testosterone production now when i say getting more sun exposure that's not going to be the same effect as taking a needle and injecting yourself with testosterone but you know if your levels are 500 or 600 nanograms per deciliter and you start doing all these little little things and you eliminate all these little little things you might have let's say 800 or 900 nanograms per deciliter after six months or a year of doing that and living a healthier lifestyle will allow you to have healthier levels of testosterone and live a better quality of life so what are some natural things that you can do to increase your testosterone levels and basically just be healthier as i already said more sun exposure wake up go outside go on a walk just don't spend all of your time indoors now a big one that a lot of people have a misconception about is eating red meat saturated fat and cholesterol testosterone is created from cholesterol yes our body synthesizes cholesterol but we also need to consume it through our diets now i'm not saying to go get a double bacon cheeseburger from five guys just to get your cholesterol to help your testosterone levels but if you Throw in some lean red meats, throw in some sirloin, filet, once a day, twice a day, every other day, a few times a week. That is one of the healthiest things that you can do with your diet. Lean red meat, whole eggs, eat them in moderation. And for me, that means eating red meat once, twice, or three times a day, and two to four whole eggs. Now on the flip side, something that you can actively do to help improve your testosterone levels is to avoid shitty foods. They are doing you no justice besides giving you instantaneous pleasure, making you more of a lazy bum, not making you a high testosterone male. So stop settling for instantaneous pleasure and instantaneous gratification and cook your own food. It is very easy to grill a steak and heat up some rice. And no, steak does not have to be expensive. I think my sirloins from Costco are like $8 a pound. Now one thing that I hope you're already doing, but if you're not, is train hard in the gym. Like I said earlier, if your body doesn't have to do hard things, why does it need high testosterone levels? If you don't exercise or if you don't train hard, lift heavy weights, that makes you a weak man. Why would a weak man have high testosterone levels? So get fucking strong. Now, if you are a lazy bum and you're always giving in to instantaneous pleasure and you have 
kind of addictions to certain things, um, whether it's you know watching TV or on your phone or whatever it is, you can try going on a dopamine detox and cut out all things that give you instantaneous pleasure or dopamine without effort required, cut them all out for a week. So no caffeine, no scrolling on your phone, for pleasure, no watching TV for pleasure, or YouTube videos or Netflix, no smoking weed, no porn. And then after a week, introduce some of those things back in in moderation. You know, throw in 200 milligrams of caffeine per day on training days, or even 100 milligrams, and try to maintain a level of control over these addictive tendencies. And this will also kind of give you time to do things that are gonna be more productive and benefit you more. Okay, the third step to increasing your testosterone levels would be to take herbal supplements. So there's a few supplements out there, natural supplements that have been shown to increase testosterone levels a little bit. And so during this period of time where you're decreasing the bad habits and increasing the good habits, this would be the time where you can throw in some of these supplements because you know it's going in the right direction. So I'd look into Phidogia agrestis, Tonka Ali, vitamin D3, zinc, ashwagandha. These supplements might help raise your testosterone levels a tiny bit. And the final way to increase your natural endogenous testosterone production without taking actual testosterone injections is to take more of a pharmacological approach by taking a selective estrogen receptor modulator with human chorionic gonadotropin. So let me explain what all those words mean. A selective estrogen receptor modulator, or a SERM, S-E-R-M, is not a SARM, but it binds to your estrogen receptors, but doesn't have the same effect as estrogen. So it's kind of like, let's say if your receptor is like this shape, like a sideways V, and estrogen, let's say, is a star. And the star comes in and binds to that receptor, and it has this whole, you know, five-pointed star on it. And because that's estrogen, it's going to cause the downstream effects and allow estrogen to do its job. So when you take something like tamoxifen or enclomiphene, that's like taking a triangle and putting it in that receptor, but it doesn't cause the estrogen cascade. So it's basically hogging that receptor because it fits, but it's not producing the estrogenic side effects. So that makes your body think that it doesn't have enough estrogen. And so how do we get estrogen? I already said it, our body converts testosterone into estrogen in our fat cells. And so in order to produce more estrogen, because we don't have enough, supposedly, we start producing more testosterone. So that's how a serum works. Our brain is gonna tell our balls to start producing more testosterone. Or more specifically, the kiss peptin neurons are gonna tell the GnRH neurons to secrete more luteinizing hormone, or LH, which signals for testosterone production in the testes. And then we have more systemic testosterone production from taking that serum. So HCG, or human chorionic gonadotropin, works very similarly. The only difference difference is that instead of telling our brain to tell our balls to produce more testosterone, we're basically taking that signal that our brain gives and we're injecting that. So we're injecting luteinizing hormone basically or something that looks like luteinizing hormone and that tells our balls to produce more testosterone. So it becomes more effective taking both something like enclomiphene and HCG. So I would still consider this natural because not only are you increasing your endogenous production, but you're also not really gonna be able to go higher than super physiological levels of testosterone. Once you're over the super physiological levels of testosterone, that's where I would consider someone not natural. You know, if they have 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 nanograms per deciliter, that's not gonna happen from taking enclomiphene and HCG. So if you follow all four of these steps, you figure out the reason why your testosterone is low and you fix that, you start implementing healthy habits, you can try taking some herbal supplements, which I would only recommend if you're hesitant on taking enclomiphene and HCG. But if you are gonna take enclomiphene and HCG, then I would just not even take the herbal supplements, it's kind of a waste. So either take the herbal supplements or the serum and HCG. If you try all those steps and you try this for six to 12 months and your levels are still not where you want them to be, that's when I would make the choice to take TRT. Now, of course, it really depends because if let's say your levels are 500 or 600, that's not low. You can still have a good quality of life, good sex drive, build muscle with 600 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. Yes, you could be higher and that might happen over time, but then it comes down to whether you want to commit to taking TRT for the rest of your life. I wouldn't bank on taking TRT for a certain period of time and then doing a post-cycle therapy protocol such as taking HCG and enclomiphene because then what you'd be doing is shutting down your natural testosterone production by taking TRT and then trying to get that production back up and running. So if you're gonna take TRT, ask yourself if it's worth it to have higher levels of testosterone for your whole life, but you have to stick a needle in your ass or your deltoid 
twice a week for the rest of your life. You could do it once a week, really just depends on the person, but still, you have to inject yourself once or twice a week for the rest of your life. It doesn't feel good. It's not fun sticking a needle in your flesh. To me, it's worth it. This is my career, this is my life. So for me to be successful, live the life I wanna live, but I have to inject myself every week for the rest of my life, it's worth it to me. But if you're not a bodybuilder, you feel fine, have a good sex drive, are strong in the gym, have good workouts, you're building muscle, but you got your blood work done and it says they're 500 to 600 or 400, I would honestly wait, especially if you're under 25, just because it's a lifelong commitment. And it may not be worth it to you when you're 30 or 40 or 60, still having to inject yourself. Just because when you were 20, you wanted to have a thousand nanograms per deciliter instead of 600. So hopefully that helps you figure out if you should take TRT if you have low testosterone. Peace.